Hi everyone, this is Bernard Bertrand, photographer, director and Lumix ambassador. Today on this GH6 tips and tricks, I'm going to talk about my very first shoot with the GH6. And I could not resist to shoot anamorphic, of course. Why does it sound so obvious to me? Well, as for me and many of us Lumix users, since the Lumix GH4, anamorphic video shooting is for sure part of the Lumix DNA. And specifically because of its micro four third sensor, of course, that is the absolute perfect size. It all comes to the aspect ratio, like four by three or 16 by nine, without stepping too far into cinematography history. It's all related to the first film standard, the 35 mm with the four perforation eye. And the 35 mm is indeed a perfect four third image ratio. Then it all changed a little bit when the sound recording also came into those 35 mm film. Later, the cinema industry the film studio wanted to find a more exciting and more immersive theater experience. So they came with a process for producing immersive widescreen image. And I'm gonna skip all the details as I would like to keep those tips and tricks video as short as possible. But filming on the entire surface of a micro four third sensor, such as the Lumix GH6 camera, is absolutely perfect in combination with an amorphic lens or anamorphic scope, such as the one I've been using, the 1.5 EVA scope. And I will come back on my setup in a minute. Basically, what we do is that we are capturing every single pixel information coming out of the micro four third sensor. As we are using an anamorphic lens or scope, the image is completely squeezed. And that squeeze amount will depend on the lens or scope you're using. And then in post, we are unsqueezing the image and we then get a gorgeous widescreen cinematographic image. And shooting anamorphic does not limit the concept to produce a super wide image. It also has a number of particularities, such as the way the anamorphic lens will react with the flares and the oval bokeh in opposition with circular bokeh coming out of the common spherical lenses. But it also mess with the focal length. Let's say you are using a 50 mm anamorphic with a squeeze factor of 2.0. It means that your focal length will be 50 mm this way. But as you are on a 2.0 squeeze, your horizontal focal length will be 25 mm. And this is unique to anamorphic lenses and scope, obviously. Imagine you have to shoot somebody driving a car and you are seated into the passenger seat. 50 mm vertical, but 25 horizontal could be really helpful, right? On the Lumix cameras, the interesting thing is not only that Panasonic offers, since a long time now, all the tools to deal with the anamorphic video recording. But on the GH6, we are now able to produce a 5.8K anamorphic image at 25p or 4.4 at 50p. This is absolutely crazy in terms of image size. Imagine the final image size when you will unsqueeze that file in post. When I mentioned earlier that we are finding all the tools to shoot anamorphic on a Lumix camera, I meant that you will of course be able to unsqueeze the image when you are recording or playing back the clip on the camera. You are actually able to choose from a large range of anamorphic lens and scope. With my Evascope, I have 1.5 squeeze, but you are able to choose from 1.3, 1.33, 1.5, 1.8 and the cinema industry standard 2.0. So no matter what anamorphic lens or scope you're using, you'll be able to work with it. And this is also the right time, as you will now find on the market pretty affordable anamorphic lenses for micro four thirds. And not only you are able to unsqueeze your image, you will also be able to tell your image stabilization system that you are using an anamorphic lens. For doing so, simply go to the image stabilizer menu. On the bottom, you will find anamorphic video. And there you will have to select the squeeze factor you are shooting with and this will adapt your image stabilization to your sensor. So let's come back to my very first shoot with the GH6. I did use the 1.5 Evascope. I absolutely love this scope. I'm using it also with the S1H and S5. And here on the GH6, I did choose to mount it on the Lumix 25 Summilux 1.4. As if you are using an anamorphic scope instead of an anamorphic lens, you will have to first choose the right taking lens for the scope. And I went there for the Semilux 25 mm. That is a really impressive lens. From there, I simply have to set the focus distance to infinity on the 25 mm. And I can now focus on the Evascope focus ring. And the Evascope has all the typical anamorphic touch. Together with the 25 mm Semilux, I get a gorgeous image that really brings the cinematographic look we are looking for. And by the way, if you want to see the final result, 
in 5K. Just go watch it on my channel. I will also post a complete breakdown of this shooting with behind the scenes shots and I will also be talking about my color grading process. That's it for now, make sure to subscribe as I will come really soon with other GH6 content. Thank you very much and see you next time.